So we now have these things that don't need sun to get energy. This energy apparently comes out of nowhere. Well, what's next? Where do we take this? Well, people clearly started experimenting with these things. And perhaps the most famous of these yeah. experimenters is Ernest Rutherford from our neighbouring country, New Zealand. Yes. Um, and what he was doing was taking uh, these radioactive elements that Marie Curie and her collaborators were producing and combining them with the sort of gas tubes that Thompson used to find the electron yep. to try and see what was actually being spitted out of these things. Okay. So what you do is you put a bit of some radioactive element, radium or radon, one end of a tube, and you'd see the particles were flung out, and then you'd try and push them sideways with electric or magnetic fields to try and see how heavy they were, how much energy they had, how fast they were going, all these sort of things. So yeah. instead of sticking that, that metal rod and then putting electricity through it, you're putting this radioactive source down one end and seeing what happens. Yes, and the, the experiment that really baffled him, he took some of these... He found that particles are being fired out yep. from radioactive elements. And these particles were quite different from electrons. They were positively charged. Yeah, and they these, were were ne these were negatively electrons charged. Electrons have negative charge. Yeah. These have positive charges. Now, the, what happens, the rules of electrostatics are that when you have the same charges, they repel each other. So you have two positive charges that push away from each other. Yeah, like magnets. Like the two north poles of a magnet. Yep. And if you have two positive charges or two negative charges, they repel, yep. but unlike charges attract. Yep. So a positive and a negative charge will attract each other. Right. This is presumably why the electrons stay in the atom. The atom, the cookie is positively charged, the chocolate chips are negatively charged, they so they like, they like to stick together and it takes a thieving child to actually pull one out or a strong voltage. Yep. So his idea was that we had these new particles, we now call them alpha particles, they're actually the nucleus of helium atoms. And they had a positive charge and a lot of mass. They had like thousands of times more mass than an electron. These are very heavy particles. Yep. I mean, still very small compared to day-to-day -day life, but much more than an electron. And the idea was he was going to try and fire them through a thin sheet of metal or something. I yep. think it was a gold sheet he used. It didn't really matter what it was. And what he was expecting is that these particles would just more or less plow straight through. Yep. The electrons wouldn't have enough mass to stop them, and the positive charge was too spread out, so it should just be able to go like a you know, hot cut, knife cut through butter through, or, yep. or a bullet through tissue paper mm. or something like this. And so he's expecting it to be fired through and maybe very slightly deflected by a close encounter with an electron or something like that. Yep. But much to his amazement, what he discovered was when he fired these very heavy particles in, some of them bounced straight back out again. So, so some made them through, but some... A tiny fraction just sort of bounced, bounced back, back at enormous angles. Which, and there would be, it would be unlikely they would just be hitting these electrons. It's well, even so, you're, this is much heavier than electrons. That's like, like you being... I mean, um, oh, an electron is like 5,000 times less massive than one of these things. Yes. So just imagine you're hit by something that weighs 5,000 times more than you. That would be like For an oil tanker or a jumbo jet. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to stop. No, that's right. Um, so you needed something that was much heavier than an electron and had to be positively charged to repel yeah. the positive charge of these alpha particles that were coming in and bounce it off. So there had to be a big, heavy, positive thing on the inside. That's right. He said it was, his amazement was like firing a 15-inch battleship shell at a piece of tissue paper and having it bounce straight back out again. <laughs> this should not happen. Yeah. But it did. And so that meant that instead of the chocolate chip... The, the, the cookie yep. being spread positive charge everywhere, all the positive charge had to be compressed into a really small region in the middle. So it was all condensed, positive charge, and then you get these negative charges on the outside. Yep. So the idea was you called the nucleus or like a pip or a core or a kernel or something like this, a seed. Yep. But all the positive charge was not spread around. It was in a very tiny lump in the middle. And to show you how tiny the lump is, there's a scale model. Um, imagine this lake is the atom, so the electrons are wandering all over this lake. Yep. Then the nucleus would be about the size of this ball floating in the middle of the lake. So even though you have this small ball in the middle of the lake, the rest of this giant lake is the rest of the atom, essentially. That's right. So this is not to scale because the nucleus would be much smaller. This would be like 
much smaller than a pixel to the scale. Yes. But basically you have this huge, almost empty region with all the electrons wandering around. As we talked about in the spectroscopy, they're actually yep. kind of like waves. You can't really say where they are. Yep. And then an absolutely microscopic lump in the middle has 99.99% of the mass and all the positive charge. So you have a bunch of space that is not dense, not heavy with these electrons, but you have a very, very massive, very densely packed center. That's right. And over the next uh, few decades, and a whole bunch of experiments, we're able to show that this nucleus is actually made of two sorts of particles. Oh, okay. So we're actually a zoo of how you make an atom. We've got the electron, which we know about, which weighs very little. Yes, and has a negative a charge. smaller to the proton. And then you have protons, which weigh you know, 2,000 times more than an electron, 1,800 and something. Same charge, only positive rather than negative. So these are exactly equal charges. Equal and opposite. But very different masses. That's right. And then also, somewhat to everyone's surprise, you have another particle with no charge at all, and also lots of mass, about the same mass as a proton. So you have two particles on the inside, a proton and a neutron, both very massive, but only one has charge positive. Yes. But then on the outside, you have this really small, not very massive particle, but it has the negative charge that's the exact opposite of that massive proton. And this, I think, is a prime example of something that no philosopher would ever have dreamt up. Is this, is this elegant? This is not even elegant. This is confusing. That's right. I mean, who the hell invented this? But the experiments seem to say this is the way these atoms are actually made up.